Hello juniors. So I welcome you all in the series of upper limb. We were covering the topic shoulder joint and this video would be the last video that is part 3 of the topic shoulder joint. In previous video we covered relations of the joint in sagittal section arterial supply nerve supply and movements of shoulder joint. Also in the end of this video I would be telling you which topics you can omit while preparing for your university exam. And I strongly recommend you to once watch this watch previous video on sagittal section of shoulder joint for better understanding of the today's topic rotator cuff. Once again rotator cuff is an important topic from university exam point of view. So I request you to make sure you complete this topic thoroughly. So in previous video we did the topic relations of joint in sagittal section. Revising this topic once which will make the base of the topic rotator cuff. So in sagittal section of shoulder joint we have seen this was our sagittal section of shoulder joint. Anteriorly the muscles were subscapularis bicep and coracobrachialis and deltoid muscle anterior fiber of deltoid muscle superiorly we had supraspinatus sub subacromial bursa acromion process coracoid process posteriorly the relations were infraspinatus posterior fiber of deltoid teres minor and inferiorly we had long head of tricep. Revising this topic by revising this topic once again, we would be able to understand this topic rotator cuff more easily. So starting with rotator cuff, also known as muscular tendinous cuff. What is the word mean muscular tendinous cuff? Musculo means muscle. Tendinous means tendon and cuff. What do you understand by cuff and collar? So cuff stands for cuff and collar. Muscular tendinous, tendon of muscle. Second point is a fibrous sheath formed by four flattened tendon which blend with the capsule of shoulder joint and strengthen it. Showing you with the help of anatomy app. So what it is written here is a fibrous sheet formed by four flattened tendons which blend with the capsule of shoulder joint and strengthen it. So this was our model. Four tendons. So this is shoulder joint humerus and scapula, glenohumeral joint and four tendons. These are, can you appreciate these tendons? These are belly part of muscle and these are the tendons. These four tendons, tendon of subscapularis muscle, tendon of supraspinatus muscle, tendon of infraspinatus muscle and tendon of teres minor muscle. So these four tendons blend at the shoulder joint. Blend means they mix, they converge. They mix at the shoulder joint and strengthen the shoulder joint. You can see all these tendons of their respective muscle are converging in shoulder joint at the humerus and strengthening the whole joint. This is what written here. It is fibrous sheet formed by four flattened tendon which blend. Here blend means mix. 
which blend with the capsule of shoulder joint and strengthen it. Muscle tendons involved are subscapularis, supraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor. What I was showing you, this was our model. So the four tendons that blend together at shoulder joint were this subscapularis tendon, supraspinatus tendon, tendon of supraspinatus muscle, tendon of infraspinatus muscle and lastly tendon of teres minor muscle. These four tendons converge and blend at the shoulder joint, capsule of shoulder joint and strengthen the whole joint. The cuff gives strength to the capsule and here again these four when blend together gives the appearance of cuff gives the appearance of whole cuff can you see here gives the appearance of cuff the cuff gives strength to the capsule of shoulder joint all around except inferiorly what it is saying that the cuff gives strength to the capsule of shoulder joint all around except inferiorly. So this is our anterior view. You can see there is no muscle or tendon forming the rotator cuff from inferior side. So this rotator cuff does not provide the strength from inferior side of to the shoulder joint. This is what it is saying. This explains why dislocation of humerus occurs more commonly in anterior inferior direction. Since the tendon support is absent in inferior direction here, therefore it, dislocation of humerus is common in anterior inferior direction. So this was our rotator cuff. This, this is the diagram from BD Chaurasia. This is again the sagittal section showing the muscular tendinous cuff or rotator cuff. Explaining you once again. This green this green part shows the tendon, four tendons of respective muscle. What were the muscles? Subscapularis muscle. So this is the tendon of subscapularis. Supraspinatus, tendon of supraspinatus muscle. Infraspinatus, tendon of infraspinatus and teres minor tendon. So these, you can see these tendons blend blend together and forms the rotator cuff. In center is again the glenoid cavity, synovial fluid, capsule of shoulder joint, subacromial bursa. As I said earlier, it is almost the same as of sagittal section of shoulder joint. Relation to the sagittal section, relation of the joint in sagittal section. So we did what we did was supraspinatus superiorly, subscapularis muscle anteriorly, infraspinatus and teres minor posteriorly. Once again same here the muscle of tendon of supraspinatus, tendon of subscapularis, tendon of infraspinatus and teres, tendon of teres minor. This makes our rotator cuff. Done with the rotator cuff. Lastly, we have the clinical anatomy of shoulder joint. Intramuscular injection are often given into the deltoid. They should be given in the middle of muscle to avoid injury to the axillary nerve. So when intramuscular injections are given, they are given mostly in deltoid 
and gluteus muscle when giving injection in deltoid as it is written here they should be given in the middle of the muscle to avoid injury to the axillary nerve this is whole deltoid muscle and this is the path of axillary nerve right here is the axillary nerve it should be given injection should be given in the middle of the nerve injury middle of the muscle to avoid injury so this is our whole deltoid muscle from here intramuscular injection should be given to avoid any injury to axillary nerve if injection is given in upper part of deltoid axillary nerve may be damaged if i am <coughs> giving injection in this way from upper part then it may lead to injury of axillary nerve and palsy of muscles so nothing much in clinical anatomy of shoulder joint done with rotator cuff and clinical anatomy so in this video we are done with rotator cuff and clinical elevation of shoulder joint so while practicing for or studying for university exam star wise i would like to give the weightage to the topics of this shoulder joint three star most important two star lesser important one star okay and topics with no star you can omit for exam so again rotator cuff two star topic relation of joint in sagittal section three star topic must be done for university exam clinical relation always two star ligaments one star and rest you can omit for your preparation clinical anatomy bursae related to shoulder joint movements nerve supply lateral supply not much important for the exam thank you